Hi, this is Calvin Williams with Improver Technologies, and this is Feature Highlight. This Feature Highlight talk is all about autonomous maintenance and the implications for your organization if you're not already practicing this methodology. Before we dive into the software itself, Improver, and how it helps drive that autonomous maintenance methodology and culture into your organization, let's talk about autonomous maintenance itself. There's four phenomenal things that autonomous maintenance does for your organization. And really there's more than four, but we'll just focus on the top four for now, okay? The first is builds operator capability. Turns your people into human sensors so they can respond a lot faster and reduce overall losses to your production process. The second is achieve and sustain base condition. And when I say base condition, I mean peak operating condition. The third is extends equipment life. So when you buy an asset, you expect so much time and so many years out of it. If you're not getting that, that could be a big problem. Autonomous maintenance might be a good solution for you. And lastly, enable superior business results. And we'll break down how frequent stops and other reliability issues, snowballs and other problems for your production process. So let's step through one by one. So the first thing it does is build operator capability. So in a, in a traditional manufacturing environment that doesn't practice AM, it looks sort of like this. You got your operator here, you got your machine here, and your operator mainly uses react, what's called reactive maintenance. And they're only using their site mainly. They see the machine go down, then they respond, they take action, okay? So other than that, they're just loading product or you know just, just kind of standing by the machine and monitoring what's happening. So, so you're running normal steady state here, then the machine goes down. This is where the operator intervenes. This is where they get involved. They say, oh, I should do something now, <laughs> right? The machine went down. So they go in, they try to fix it for a while. They may be able to do it, they may not. They may call maintenance, whatever the case may be. They get it back up and running. It goes for a while, it shuts down again, and that cycle continues until you hit schedule. Essentially, it's what you're going for, okay? What you want to do though is you want to unlock a little more potential as, as human sensors for your manufacturing process. So instead of just using site at the lowest possible level, just responding to breakdowns, they're using all their senses, maybe not taste so much, maybe not yet, <laughs> depending on where you work, depending on where you work. So, so yeah, you got sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste. And essentially, instead of you know waiting for the line to go down, you're using your site and saying, wait, something's out of whack here. Let me respond and let me intervene before we have a stoppage. You're using your hearing and saying, hey, this doesn't sound right, right? I hear something, it's not supposed to sound like that. It's making a clicking sound, a dinging sound, a banging sound. It's not supposed to do that. Let me intervene before it results in a stoppage, okay? Touch, hearing, so forth. And, and what you end up with is a lot more steady state of operation where you're preventing stoppages as opposed to just reacting to them. Second is achieve and sustain base condition. I mean, this, this is sort of what a machine management cycle sort of looks like, where you, know, you start high, when you first buy the machine, it starts high, then it sort of declines over time due to entropy, due to wear and tear, due to various things that we'll talk a little bit more about over here, but it starts to decline and then you, take, you, you intervene, right? You do a Kaizen event, you do some maintenance, you do an overhaul, a refurbishment, and you get the performance back up, starts to decline again, and sort of repeats that cycle on and on until you eventually replace the asset. Base condition is essentially peak operating condition. So that's running as well as it did when the thing was brand new. You know, once you got it dialed in and running, it ran well, and then over time it started to, started to decline. So you want your machines running like new for its entire lifespan. So that's essentially peak operating condition. And the difference between the actual condition and peak or base condition are losses. This is what, this is unplanned downtime. This is a lot of what your OEE is measuring for you. What you wanna to get to is a state where, just like up here, sort of corresponds with the idea here is uh, your operator has the power and it's there full time. No, nobody else is standing there next to the line like your operator is, right? So they have a unique ability to respond to potential issues a lot sooner so that performance never quite declines like it does over here. It never quite dips that low, right? It stays at around base condition at all times because they're responding at a much faster pace 
minimizing your losses in the process. And this is what I mean by this is what this is what is meant when people say zero loss culture or or zero loss mindset is keeping your your actual performance very close to uh, performance at base condition. OK. All right. So that's the second thing. The third thing here is extends equipment life. There's two factors that erode equipment life or or cause equipment deterioration. The first is normal wear and the second is forced deterioration. Normal wear is unavoidable. That's going to happen, you know, depending on what you're running, depending on how you're running it, depending on the nature of the, the parts and material used in the construction of the equipment, you're going to have normal wear. And this is a lot of this is what your PM or CIO program is there to address normal wear. So if you think about refurbishments, overhaul, replace, repair, etc., all these things are there to address normal wear. Then on this other side of the equation is forced deterioration. Now that's really four pieces here, but if I'm, if you thought about it more, you can come up with more, more than, more than four factors that drive force deterioration and force deterioration is things that are controllable that end up declining your equipment life. If you don't, if you don't optimize the, the way the machine is managed. Okay. So that's misuse and damage. Okay. I put two things in that category. That's physically damaging the equipment. That's, you know, Bumps and bruises, running a forklift, forklift into the thing, acceleration and decelerations. Machines, mach, machine like to, machines like to operate as, at steady state operations. They like to just cycle through, smooth, easy, not, you know, not too hard, not too slow. It's just like uh, uh, your car. Your car likes to operate at steady state. It doesn't like a lot of accelerating and decelerating. It's, and, you know, I, I, I compare that to vibration also. I consider vibration that aspect because vibration is essentially rapid excel and decel in opposite directions back and forth vibration shakes bolts loose right so at a, at a, at a, at a more macro level acceleration deceleration shakes your machine apart right so uh you can imagine what kind of problems that generates over time um lubrication so there's two aspects of two aspects of lubrication there's the quality of lubricant you want to use the right lubricant if it's an older machine you use a different type of lubricant than a younger machine or depending on the nature of the activity that the machine is performing, you want to use the right kind of lubricant. The other aspect of that is frequency, right? Just like a car, you got to get oil changes every so many miles. Machines need oil changes every so many miles as well. They need to be lubricated every, every so many miles as well, depending on various factors there. Um, and the, the last piece is contamination. This is, you know, contamination from the product itself. Uh, if it's, you know, this is a big thing in the food industry as there's <laughs> several issues that are tied to contamination in food. But um, is that all, all the, the, the concept holds true, right? You don't want contamination because it erodes the life of your equipment as well. So this could be oil leaks. It could be debris, dust, you know, anything that's that's building up on your equipment that doesn't belong. or doesn't contribute to the performance of the asset. Okay, so that's forced deterioration. All these things are controllable. So when you do AM, you're actually looking to eliminate these factors out of the equation, getting the maximum value from your equipment that normal wear will allow, right? So it could be a difference of 10, 15, 20 years if, if you really can drive these things out of your process. Autonomous maintenance certainly aims to help you do that. Lastly, is superior business results. If you don't have an AM culture and you do have a lot of downtime, more than 3% unplanned downtime, what it looks like is this. You're running along, machine fails. Operator intervenes, they get maintenance involved, whatever the case may be. They get it back up, they run along, it fails again. And you sort of repeat that cycle until you can hit schedule or finish your production, meet your production objectives. Well, what you want to accomplish with AM or any maintenance fun or any operating or maintenance uh, regimen or method is you want to eliminate these gaps here, right? So here you eliminate those gaps. You can actually hit schedule with a lot less hours. And the difference there is either savings. It's throughput increase. If you want to run more product with that extra time, it's a uh, lead time reduction. Obviously you can hit, you can hit schedule with less time. Um, quality improvement. If you have less, most of your quality losses happen, happen at startups. 
So with less stops, you have less starts. <laughs> so less starts translates directly in a higher quality, right? And obviously a more in control process is going to deliver better quality as well. Safety. A lot of your safety issues happen because of starts and stops, right? You got a lot more opportunity for somebody to get hurt, reaching into the machine, trying to fix it, you know, doing various activities that are out of the norm, out of steady state trying to uh, trying to meet some production targets or demands, you know, being behind and running and rushing and slipping and falling or something like that. A lot of you find that a lot of your safety issues come from this type of operating dynamic. And if you can transition to this model, you'll you'll see better safety results as well. So really all your uh, your your business results all around benefit from this model. So what this down here describes real briefly is you have a process or a set of process steps and in between each each of those is you know certain inventory levels work in process work in progress levels okay the reason you have this inventory here is because you don't trust that he's going to be able to supply you <laughs> a steady flow of product you 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 automatically assume that he's going to perform like this where you have ups and downs and to buffer for those losses you have to maintain some inventory Right. So when he goes down, it doesn't hurt you. You can just draw from inventory. Right. To keep to keep this guy running. Inventory is essentially money on the floor. Right. That's what I call inventory. Money sitting on the floor. Inventory is money. So it's, it makes a lot more sense to get to a model where you don't need to maintain such inventory and get to what's called one piece flow, and which which ultimately leads to just in time delivery. So after all that, you got a finished goods inventory, which is going to be you know, at a, at some level to, to buffer for losses upstream. And essentially you can, you can get rid of a, or get that down quite a bit. Now you may have some, you may be building, pre-building some finished goods inventory because of uh, seasonality. And, you know, we can talk seasonality and how to manage that in a different, different video, but ideal state generally true. You want to try to especially get rid of your work in progress inventory and get your finished goods inventory down or eliminate it to as to a low as low degree or lower quantity as possible here one piece flow this is setting you up to have really one piece of inventory between each station where you're just pulling from the customer and you really can get to a true lean organization or a uh or just in time delivery type of situation okay Okay, with that said, so let's talk Improver. How does Improver help you deliver this in your manufacturing organization? And really all of, uh, Improver has five major features, right? And all those features contribute toward that end, okay? So first is strategy deployment. Strategy deployment gets everyone to commit to an improvement target from the CEO down to the operator level. In the course of each operator trying to drive improvement in their area of the business, they're going to have to, let's say, you know, Johnny on line three, you need to improve the line by 10% over the next quarter. In order to hit that 10%, they're going to actually learn how the machine is supposed to run. Then they're going to learn why these preventative maintenance things are necessary in order to hit that performance improvement target. The thing that's driving those losses, that thing that's driving that 10% opportunity for improvement is the very same things we just talked about up here. So in the course of trying to address that 10% opportunity for improvement or improve performance on the line, they're actually going to be organically learning these same concepts that we just talked. Okay. That's number one. Uh, number two is PDCA. So through the course of trying to drive improvement, they're actually going to be uncovering opportunities to do cleaning, inspection, lubrication, and understand why that stuff needs to be done on a regular frequency. Uh, the other preventative maintenance steps, why this uh, repair, refurbish, replace, you know, why those things are necessary, what your defects are, what your abnormalities are that are driving losses. They're going to be uncovering those things as part of root cause analysis and PDCA functionality. And then Improver helps manage uh, the preventative maintenance work itself. So submitting, creating a PM and assigning it to someone and saying, hey, let's do this PM on, on a set frequency, even if it's a mechanic. Uh, creating CILs, clean inspection, lubrication, and let's say, hey, let's do these CILs on a certain frequency, uh, especially if they're operator driven. That's even more because it, it starts to drive these these behaviors up here a little further and so many other great things. Ideas for improvement. 
If you don't have a structured system for ideas for improvement, Improver has one back then where anyone can just go in, create the idea, route it through your system for certain approvals, calculating cost savings, calculating benefit, calculating you know, cost and so forth. So all that stuff is baked into the system um, and so many other wonderful things. So it really drives the work. And that's the difference. That's a big difference between Improver and many other systems, because many, many systems give you data. Improver gives you data, too. It gives you OEE, lost data and so forth. But not many systems, if any, really help manage the actual work, driving meaningful action against the improvement opportunities, the data, the results that you're seeing in your process. That's what Improver does for you. It drives the work against the opportunities, okay? The third piece is the data itself. You need to know your losses. You need to know where your biggest opportunities for improvement are just so you can make your effort, your, your work a little more impactful. The fourth piece is kata coaching. So this is teaching leaders how to be better coaches so that they can help develop people capability at a faster pace. And then the last piece is the employee engagement functionality. This is recognizing those everyday small wins and showing people and showing the entire organization that we're getting better every day and who's getting better at what pace, who's setting personal bests and when, then driving that conversation around success stories and what it really takes to improve process performance. And that's the social element. That's, uh, you know, a lot of softwares provide data, like I say, but many miss the ball when it comes to really incorporating elements of social engagement and social media, social interaction to motivate people to want to continue their improvement journey. So this is Calvin Williams with Improver Technologies. If you have any questions, feel free to visit us at www.improver.com. Have a great day. Thanks.